Uh, my first duty, of course, is to welcome you all here uh, to the wedding of Simon and Charlotte. It's wonderful to see so many and a tremendous cross-section of the uh, great community that we have in this country. Uh, all ages, um, all sexes, and it's nice to see you. <laughs> uh, I would uh, particularly like to welcome uh, Raymond Sandler, who had come all the way from Canada. Mm. <laughs> uh, not just for your wedding, please, no? <laughs> but uh, nice to see you here. Ted and Audrey. Uh, who would like to welcome to the family. I haven't seen Ted for 64 years and I'm 63. <laughs> <laughs> so work that one out. Great to see you. Actually, we met on an internet dating site. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, with your abilities and your organisational talents, you're obviously a chip off the old block. <laughs> <laughs> She's been very... <laughs> Sorry about that. See you later. So we've got the Irish contingent. Let's have you, where are you Irish contingent? We have it. That's, that's uh, Charlotte's auntie's uncle. And uh, we'd like to welcome all the Smiths of Morland. Sounds like an institution. <laughs> and in particular, um, Margaret and Bob, who are um, celebrating, or well, just recently celebrating, six zero, 60 years of marriage. Is that right? So it just goes to show you that it can be done. <laughs> and uh, not only that, uh, I can show that Bob's actually from Sunderland. And he's a Sunderland supporter. Hey. Here we are. Hey. My boys are all Sunderland supporters. That's where my parents are from. Well, at least my father, anyhow. Um, okay, and then we have some apologies, uh, in particular from my mother who unfortunately due to uh, infirmity and uh, senility is unable to be with us, but nevertheless, I'm sure that if she could, she would be here for, for us and with us. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, uh, an email that came into my inbox this morning from Patrick and Rosalie Bissett, if you remember, um, from, from Scotland days, and they send their blessings. Uh, they can't be here, unfortunately, through ill health, but nevertheless, they think you're going to have a wonderful day, and they're so pleased that the weather forecast looks good. That was written yesterday. <laughs> it came to pass. Okay, so that's that bit. Oh, by the way, um, if anybody's worrying how long I'm going to talk, Ben's advised me to keep down to an hour. Is that all Make one short, it's fine. I uh, was actually on a speaking engagement in Northern Ireland, and uh, it was a small um, gospel hall I was speaking at, and I uh, wasn't quite sure how long to pitch the sermon for, so at about 30 minutes I was uh, hesitating. And the man at the back said, and stood, stood up and said, Hallelujah, brother! So encouraged by that, I carried on for a further 35 minutes. <laughs> at the end of the meeting, I was having a cup of tea with a bun out the back, as you do, and this gentleman came over and shot me by the hand. I said, well, thank you for your encouragement, brother. I said, I was really thinking of stopping at 35 minutes when you stood up and said, Hallelujah, brother. And I said, that really was great encouragement. He said, I wasn't saying, Hallelujah, brother. He died saying, That'll do you, <laughs> So, <laughs> with apologies to my Irish friends. <laughs> so, I've got to talk about my daughter. Well, what is there to say? So we'll move on to Simon. <laughs> no, uh, well, actually, it's a funny old world, isn't it? I mean, I knew Charlotte when she was little. I mean, that sounds <laughs> This is quite big. And uh, I don't really know her, as I used to know her. She's still a little girl in my mind. But having seen her over the last few months, years, weeks, hours, planning for the wedding, I realised that actually she's a very talented young woman. And, uh, you know, it's amazing when you see your children growing up and taking over and organising things that perhaps you did for them when they were little. And, and I'm very impressed, I have to say, with your abilities and your organisational talents. You're obviously a chip off the old block. <laughs> <laughs> she's vivacious, she's attractive, she has an artistic temperament, Simon, <laughs> and she's talented. She's also very supportive. She kept British Telecom shares going for years. <laughs> uh, she kept our phone call. I remember it well. And uh, contributing to the world's general uh, um, financial problems. <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it in Anyhow, um, Charlotte dear, we, uh, we will miss you as our daughter, 
But we know you are our married daughter, and we look forward to welcoming you both of you and Simon to the house on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on now to Simon. Well, <laughs> well, anyone that can fix your computer has got to be good. <laughs> and I mean, in my estimation, Simon is the bee's knees because he sorted out my computer on several occasions, saving me large amounts of dosh. So well done. <laughs> good luck. But the other thing was that I was very impressed is when he came up to me one day, it was just before Christmas, about two years ago, 18 months ago, and he said, uh, I'd like to marry your daughter. Well, I nearly fell into the Morris Mind bonnet. <laughs> A, that someone would want to marry Charlotte. <laughs> But also that he actually was going to ask me, which I thought was very nice, very polite. And, and I had to keep that secret for a week. <laughs> keep it a secret for a week. And anyway, I did. And so uh, when he proposed and uh, Charlotte rang up crying, we all thought, ah, disaster. But no, he proposed. <laughs> and that's great. Um, so Simon, welcome to the family. We are as you see us, and uh, things will never be the same. And we look forward to that change because you have brought change in our family, of obviously Mary and Charlotte. And so we welcome you both, and we look forward to the future together. Right. By the way, uh, you all enjoyed the food tonight? Yes. Now, I was expecting venison, but I was told it was dead deer. That's a lot for me. Then there was a chicken, but it was too cheap. <laughs> oh, uh, talking about food, um, <laughs> Now Simon, one of your duties, you don't know yet, will be to cook. So Elaine and I, after great contemplation, decided that you ought to have the Biro Home Recipe 4th edition, How to Cook. <laughs> it's, it's from Northern Ireland, so it's full of good food, and you're, you're welcome to use it. Indeed, indeed. So enjoy it, enjoy it. Now on a, on a slightly more serious note now, we have to have the serious bit. Uh, I think it's important for you both to realise, and I hope I'm not teaching you the subjects, but relationships change. The Hollywood notion of love for life is a fable, but it is the will to meet each other's needs as your relationship changes, which is important to you. You have, living together, and as it describes to us in the book of Genesis, which book I would recommend you read if you've not yet read it, because it's a formula for life, you do read it, and in there it talks that we live together as one flesh. When you live as a couple, you become one flesh. And now, having done that over the last few years, you have now made it a public declaration before God and these good people here that you are now in a marriage contract as well. And so to the world and to God, you are one. And we welcome you into that married life. We are all of us very pleased for you that you now into that serious relationship. But I have a different cautionary tale for you. Relationships can be very puzzling. And as we all know, taking celibacy, if you don't know what celibacy is, please ask your neighbour, or come and see me afterwards and I'll tell you about it. <laughs> taking celibacy, for example, this can be a choice or a condition imposed on you by environmental factors. Now, while attending a special marriage awareness weekend in Doncaster recently, Albert and Gertrude listened to the facilitator in tone it is very important that husbands and wives do all the things that are important to each other. So he turned to the men and he asked, Can you each name your wife's favourite flower? Whereupon Albert leaned over, touched Gertrude's arm gently and whispered, Self-raising, isn't it? <laughs> and thus began Albert's life of celibacy. <laughs> you have been warned. Now, we've got another thing here, look at this, oh, that's great. This is the highway code for marriage. Right, so when you reach a difficult turning, a difficult position, look at the highway code, read it, and I'll test you next week. That's really Well, I haven't learned off the road and see you. Now, and finally, finally, a funny story from, I'm an environmental health officer, anybody not, doesn't know about way cooks, and, um, one of the things I learned in my trade calling or profession is that how do you keep a cock or a peacock quiet? Does anybody know? Right, well you keep them in the dark. And you put them on a roost, and when it's all goes dark, they go to sleep. And if they wake up, they bang their heads on the ceiling and go back to sleep again, because it's still dark. That's true, that's how you do it. So, 
Simon, if Charlotte gets frisky on the flight, wakes up, put this on her, and she'll go back to sleep. <laughs> So you're on a roost, it just needs to be kept in the dark. Right, ladies and gentlemen, 